All right, so today we'll be talking about the insular cortex. Uh, we'll be talking about, first, some general functions. Secondly, the uh, location. Vascularization. Histology, uh, regions in atomical divisions, and also be talking about connections. All right, so let's begin. So for functions, we'll have, um, write down functions, sensory, emotion, motivation, and cognition. Now you might notice these three are very similar to the amygdala video that I did earlier. And there's a lot of overlap uh, in ter with the insular cortex and the amygdala uh, with certain processes, but there's also quite a few different features of the insular cortex. And even the overlapping cases uh, process very differently. Uh, but we'll talk about that more in a physiology video on the insular cortex. But that's just a basic understanding. All right. And if we're to look at the general location, if I were to draw a brain as such, we'll have the Frontal lobe up there, temporal lobe over here, occipital lobe. Oh, I should <laughs> draw the frontal lobe a little bit farther back. It's a it's a pretty bad brain, but let's just go with it for the moment. And if we were to, this is called the sylvian fissure, or the lateral sulcus. You'll probably see it more often referred to as the lateral sulcus. And if you were to peel these lobes back, it would unveil an area inside which looks something like this. So you peel it away, and then this area right inside there, this is what we'll be talking about for the insular cortex. And so this is the general location. All right. For vascularization, vascularization, we'll look at the blood supply. And then the venous drainage. Oh, whoops. And for the blood supply, we'll have the middle cerebral artery. And for the venous drainage, we'll have the deep middle cerebral vein. All right. So for histology, this is where things start to get a bit interesting. It's right up here, histology. We're gonna have, uh, I'll, I'll link an article below, but uh, they've divided up into 
uh, seven cytoarchitectonic areas uh, based on their granularity. So these areas will be G, IG, ID1, through ID3, IA2, and then IA1. The G being granular, D being disgranular, uh, disgranular, and A being agranular. And so what does this mean? Well, if we were to draw out a little chart, it would look something like this, where we have G descending down to IA1. We will have over here layers two and four. Now these layers will be definitely present in the in the G region, but they will become almost invisible when we get down to IA1. Uh, at that point, we have a fusion of two, three, five, six. These will all fuse, and it will become a four layer. A uh, four four layer tissue. And up here, it will be six layers. So throughout all of these layers, down if we go to IG, and then the IDs, and then the IA2, these are going to keep continuously, these granular layers, or uh, layer four, layer four is gonna be responsible for the granularity, describes the granularity. Eventually, we will see this layer almost completely disappear by the time it gets to IA1. And so these are three terms which are often used to describe the, the histology of the insular cortex. But all right. And there is another interesting feature, which is these von Economo neurons. You may have heard of these before. Von Economo neurons. Or VENs. These are large bipolar neurons. These could be up as four times up to four times as large as normal neurons. And these have a large single dendritic shaft like this, where we have the soma and we have the axon. They'll look more like this. They will have little branches. And so this is where the, uh, put dendrite, this is where the signal will be received and then this is where it will be propagated along the axon. Now this is very interesting because the uh, basal and apical portions look very symmetrical, whereas a normal, more normal neuron, looks more something like this, if you've noticed. So these neurons are quite different in, in appearance uh, from a normal neuron and quite distinct. Uh, they are also only found so, so far in elephants, elephants, great apes, 
and cetaceans. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. But this is for the dolphins and whales, sea-dwelling mammals. Um, and then it's only found in layer five. of the insular cortex or the frontoinsular cortex, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, and the anterior cingulate gyrus or anterior cingulate cortex. It's a very interesting neuron. Uh, it's not particularly well understood. An idea behind this neuron is that maybe potentially the large size, it it's meant for a fast propagation of uh, of a signal, and as these these all of these organisms have very large brains, and this is uh, supposedly a property of convergent evolution as well, because with each of these animals, they have a very distinct and non-overlapping -over uh, ancestry. And so for the great ups, even, even among all primates, not all primates have these von econo Econimo neurons. And uh, elephants are in a very distinct lineage from great apes, it, as well as the cetaceans. So for each, that each one has evolved separately, these von Econimo neurons, it's a, an idea that's behind this property of convergent evolution. It's a naturally efficient property. And the idea is that, that this large size helps it carry the signal across the brain very quickly. And even though these dendri dendritic uh, arms here are very narrow, they can sample a column so they sample a column and then quickly pass on that information to another region. But all right, that's enough about these von Economo neurons. So when we're going to look at it specifically, the insular cortex and how it looks physically, when you remove away the occipital and, and parietal lobe, separate it out to get a good look in at the insular cortex. You'll notice that there is a, let me change the color for this. There is a central solstice, something like this. And there will be an anterior section anterior and posterior section. And this is looking from the right side perspective. And there will be a three gyri on the anterior side. So three gyri and two gyri on the posterior side with these three being the anterior short, the medial short, and the posterior short. I'll just write PS for that one. And for these two gyri, we'll have the anterior long and the posterior long, right? So if we put them out, we'll have anterior long, posterior long, posterior short, medial short, and anterior short. Now you might also see these written as ASG, MSG, PSG for, uh, for the gyrus. So anterior short gyrus, medial short gyrus. So 
you might see this nomenclature as well. Now, when it comes to the overlay between these two areas, I'm going to drag an image onto the screen. All right, and so these regions overlapping, I'll show you a small image. Let me make that a bit larger. All right, and so you can see how the mapping looks with these uh, granular and disgranular areas when mapped over the insular cortex. And over here, up here, we have the parietal operculum, and down here, we have the temporal. And so we're looking from the right side perspective when overlaying. But this gives you a good idea of, of how these two terms, uh, anatomical regions, coincide. But all right. And for the last part, we'll just briefly talk about some of the connections with the insular cortex. And so uh, let me write down connections. So we'll have the insula will be connecting to the amygdala. And this will be the lateral, the basolateral regions, and these will be reciprocal. But it also does project to the central amygdala, the central nucleus, which is quite interesting if you watch the amygdala video. Uh, we also have the BNST, or the bed nucleus of the stria terminalis. The MDN region of the thalamus. I believe that's medial dorsal nucleus. I haven't written in my notes, but uh, the lateral hypothalamus. The perirhinal cortex and the entorhinal cortex. So these are parahippocampal areas. The anterior cingulate gyrus, where you also may remember that those other von Economo neurons are also there. The orbitofrontal cortex and the medial prefrontal cortex. But all right. We'll speak about this in more detail in the physiology video, but thank you for watching.